Good afternoon. Welcome to the Theotrade Afternoon Video. I'm Blake Young. Today is August 17th, 2023, and today we're going to look at three stocks that could rally from interest rates peak. Now, when I say interest rates peak, I, it draws two different things to mind. One is that we are peaking and not going to go any higher, and the other is that we're rising and we're continuing to move those interest rates higher and higher and higher. So I think we can take a look at both directions. What if we fail at this annual high and do not move any higher? That's one peak that we can talk about. And what stock or stocks will benefit from that move. If it's going to continue to move higher, what stocks will benefit from that move or what stocks could benefit from both? So to start out with, I want you to notice that we are at a one-year high as far as the 10-year treasury yield. The 10-year treasury yield, if we look back even further, this will take us all the way back to the 2008 peak or highest level in the 10-year treasury yield. If I look at this, we got to change this to weekly though. If we look at the weekly rates going back 20 years, you can see this 4.3% was a ceiling in 2008. If we clear that rate, the next major ceiling or the top ceiling would be all the way up here about 5.3%. And so either we're going to reverse at this level from a technical perspective, reverse about 4.3% and drop that this is the highest rate the 10-year treasury yields are going to go, or we're going to push higher another full 1% to go up to 5.3%. It is a good thing to know that generally speaking, the home mortgages, and commercial loans are based off seven-year and 10-year bonds. So if the 10-year bond is rising, you can assume that the home mortgage rates are 2% higher than this, and that the commercial rates are about 25 to 3% higher than this. That means mortgage rates are about 63 to 6.5%, and commercial loans could be as high as 7 to 7.5% as well. So watching this move, 10-year treasury yields are significant as an indication of whether we'll have growth or not, expansion or not. In fact, we saw some manufacturing data reported today, and it showed better than expected after 14 months of negative Philadelphia Fed manufacturing. But reality is it's better than the previous year, not necessarily true growth and expansion. So it's not looking as great for manufacturing as we might expect. But what stocks will benefit from a reversal here, and what stocks will benefit from a continuation. Let's start first with the continuation, because right now today is a gap up close higher, and if we look at the bond prices at the same time, the ZN, the ZN will show you that we are not just retesting the annual high, we cleared the annual low. We broke through the annual low here, we traded through the annual low price here, we did that three days ago, and we made a new low today. So the move to this three-year high, I do believe it is indicating that the 10-year treasury yields are going to keep going because the 10-year treasury bonds have already cleared the low. So there's really not an obstacle to bond prices continuing to move lower. And you'll see down here we have an inverse correlation that's 98% inverse correlation from the 10-year treasury bond price versus the 10-year treasury yield. High, high inverse correlation because as bond prices drop, yields go up. So who would benefit from that? Let's first take a look at SBAC. SBAC is a communications company, and you can see that they've been beat up, knocked down, trounced, and dropped all the way back to their annual low, very similar to the way bond prices have gone. As we look at SBAC, it's a, all the way down to 220 from 350, major reversal. Look at the three-year time frame. This is a three-year low. Again, very similar to the way bonds look. If you look down here at the bottom, you'll notice well, we can leave it on the weekly so you can see the longer term trends with those yields. If we adjust this so we can see the one and negative one, you have to make sure you're looking at the right information as far as this correlation goes. You can see that we've been inversely correlated all the way throughout this year and over the last three years. Had a few times that we weren't inverse correlated, fine. But the majority of the time, SBAC has an inverse correlation to bond yields and a very high inverse correlation, getting down to 94, 95% inversely correlated. So if bonds are going to bounce, if yields are going to peak and reverse, SBAC could be a very inexpensive way to start looking at opportunities to buy or invest in something that would benefit from a peak interest rate that is going to begin to fall. As we look at the chart from the very long term, again, looking back, this is a major barrier. It's a low down near about 215 to 220. That 215 to 220 is defending, and even with the massive sell-off over the last couple of days, 
SBAC isn't selling off at the same rate. You can see, in fact, SBAC is up today while the NASDAQ is down a point and a half. We're seeing a real battle here at the lows. And if we're going to see the lows there, this could be an inexpensive price. You might notice as well the implied volatility they have up on the chart. It's solely at 31%. And that 31% is roughly the 26th percentile of its implied volatility based on historic volatility. So it's very inexpensive. It's very inexpensive to buy if you want to buy, say, a call option on this. I don't think you're going to get paid very much for selling a put because it is so low as far as on its historic implied volatility or current implied volatility percentage. But SPAC could be a really good opportunity to buy on a bounce if you see bond prices bounce. Now, what will benefit if bond prices continue to fall and interest rates continue to rise? Well, primarily energy. And we can start with XLE and kind of look at the long-term energy pricing and look for that high correlation to the 10-year treasury. And you can see I've already had that done here. But as we're looking at the high correlation between interest percentage and energy, they have a tendency to run together. But one of the ones I like even better is MPC. As we're looking at MPC, what do we see? Let's zoom in on, on the zeros and the ones. We're going to do the long-term correlation again. Now, this one is already very high. If we're going to look at a very high-priced stock, we're going to look to see what are our best options to trade it. As we're currently at, from the weekly view, 85% correlation. Looking at that 85% correlation, we expect if yields continue to rise, if bond prices fall, MPC should continue to rise. We already have an amazing long-term bullish trend, and we've gone from just the last three years from 26 to 149, seeing an increase of nearly 600%. So watching this 85% correlation up here, that would help us looking for opportunities to continue to trade this rising bullish trend. We got a little pullback, which could be opportunistic on MPC. This pullback from 150 down to about 141, seeing a $9 pullback or about a 7, 6, 7% 7 pullback could be an opportunity to buy on the bounce here, assuming that the yields are going to break through the high and that MPC continues to its bullish trend. Now, looking at your implied volatility, your implied volatility is at 30% here, which is the 11th percentile, which means this is super cheap, super inexpensive to buy options on this. And even though we're near the high, the pullback could be an opportunity to buy a long call for a very inexpensive price based on if it's historic values. If we're looking at buying a long call on MPC on this bounce, the current correlation, the current move, the current expectation we might look at in conjunction with this has an expected move or an implied volatility move that is pricing in about a 15-point rally just by October. And if we went 15 points, that would be a 10% increase in price. And again, your current implied volatility is as a percentage is at 11%. Very inexpensive opportunity to buy a bounce. And you can certainly look at whatever opportunity you have in technical analysis to look for a higher close or whatever you need to confirm that. But right now it's an inexpensive play to trade in the direction of rising rates. So if you think rates are going to continue to rise and bond prices are going to fall, MPC is probably the play to look. Now the last one is going to be one that could benefit from both. Benefit from peak rates pulling back down or benefit from rates staying high or continuing to rise. And that's actually SoFi or Sophie, or however you'd like to pronounce it, S-O-F-I. Now, Sophie or Sofi is a technology company, but it is also a bank. It is a financial service company. So we have a bank slash technology company, and it's going to benefit from the two ideas. If interest rates fall, then tech companies have a tendency to borrow and do really well that way. If interest rates remain high and they have cash, they can lend that money. They have a lending and technology platform for the financial services industry. And again, SoFi can play across both sides from investing and lending, etc. So as we're looking at these moves, we're looking for the move up higher. SoFi is pulling back down to this low and has found a near-term support. As we're looking, don't worry about the correlation here. The correlation goes positive, negative, positive, negative. If we look back over the three years, you'll be able to see that. And you see it going back and forth. So the correlation directly tied to interest rates isn't there. 
we have a broken correlation, which is fine because this is what we're looking for, something that could benefit from rising rates or a peak interest rate because they have areas in both segments that would benefit. So as we're looking at SoFi and looking at the previous lows here, the pullback here, I want you to notice a couple of things. They have the ability to survive. It's very inexpensive here, so I don't know if we even need to buy options on this where it's an $8 stock. But as we're looking at this, and we're looking to pull back to a key support level, and we look over to their financials, taking a look at their financials, here's SoFi's financials, you'll notice that they have a current ratio of 5.7. That tells us they have five times the amount of money they need to meet their current obligations. Which means they're sitting on cash and the ability, or at least the low debt, to be able to survive no matter what happens. So I like this from a discounted price and an opportunity to look for that bounce. As we're looking at that bounce again, if we're going to retest the previous highs, if we bounce off of 8 and go up to 11, we're talking about nearly a 25% rally just to retest the highs. And I do think this is a pretty strong barrier. If you look at the options on this, if you are interested in the options on this, where it's down at these lows, the implied volatility is already at 0 .6, or 67%, but the implied volatility compared to the current implied volatility percentage is 9. So we're in the bottom 10 percentile of the last year and so the options to buy a call on this are very, very inexpensive. So watching for this and looking for this move back up there, it could benefit just from the swing from 8 to 11. But look at the bigger picture. If we're talking about a change in interest rates and we find support here, look at where we could go. The three-year highs, if interest rates continue to rally and get to the, their three-year highs and get to their 10-year highs and 20-year highs, SoFi has the potential of going from $8 all the way up to $24 or $25. We could be looking at a 300% increase in value on SoFi. Now, that is our three stocks that you could watch for peak interest rate, but I want to do one other thing. I want to give you a bonus, and that is if then... If MPC, if energy, if oil prices continue to climb, who would also benefit with rising interest rates and rising energy? And that's First Solar. First Solar, First Solar is not one that I've been a huge fan of as much as many people love to chase this one higher. I want you to see this is the three-year chart. And we're about the mid-price as far as implied volatility goes over the last three years. But you can see we're pulling back to a near-term support that was previous resistance price near about 179, 180. If energy prices continue to move higher, historic behavior is that we start looking for other ways to reduce our energy costs. And First Solar is one that benefits from that. First Solar has been able to maintain some strength up here after the corrections in other markets and was even able to maintain the strength despite crude prices falling. So as we're watching this through here, I'm looking at First Solar to potentially find a support level near about 178, maybe down to 171. If we look at our implied volatility here, and we look at the financial ratios of First Solar, we have a couple of things that kind of correlate over there to SoFi. We have a 3.6 current ratio, and even a quick ratio of 2.8, telling us they have cash. They have the ability to survive. They can meet all their debt obligations and still have 2.6 times their current debt obligations to meet the conditions. As we look at the implied volatility on this one and look at the historic versus the current, current implied volatility is at 36%, which would tell you that it's a little bit discounted. It's in the bottom third, but not necessarily overpriced or underpriced. And I think you could go either way with buying a call or even selling puts or put verticals down here at 177 or 170 in that area. So those are the three stocks, plus a bonus, that you could look at assuming or planning on a rally from interest rates peak. That's going to do it for me today. Have a great day, everybody, and we'll talk to you again next week.